Welcome to Mastara, fellow gamers, as you screwed up my plans with your voting as I had to toss out all my notes on Tabaxi vs. Rakasta, thanks to a slew of late votes, which changed this week's video to Blackmore characters in the known world. So I grabbed the appropriate books and started looking up the necessary information last night. That's when all the speculating started on who's time traveling and why. But enough teasing, I'm Mr. Welch, and let's bring Blackmore to the modern day. Before I get into the details, I have to point out there's two areas of Blackmore that travelers can arrive from. You've got the Uther period, where they discover an ally with the Beagle, with the Egg of Coot, and the Temple of the Frog. And then you've also got their mundane enemies, like the Thonian Empire, the Duchy of Ten, and the Afridi Empire, among others. Then you've got the Magitech Blackmore Empire, hundreds of years in the future, with the sentient robots and the magic spaceships and the force shields and the powered plate mail. I am sure there's a lot of stuff that happened between the expedition to the Beagle and the Great Reign of Fire, but there's nothing in any form that describes the interregium between Uther and the end of Blackmore. Now, starting with Uther, you've got a lot of time travel between Blackmore and the known world through the comeback in. The technological period between Uther's time and current day are quite similar, with Blackmore pre-Beagle being a bit behind Derek and Erglantry in tech level. The fact that Blackmore went from swords and shields to disruptors and plasma bombs in the space of a thousand years showcases how advanced the Beagle was. It is established immediately that Blackmore can send and receive people from different time periods in every single Blackmore module, usually by sending agents of the fetch, Uther's spymaster, forward in time to get what they need. Ruta Malafor and Veslo Meriden are the agents sent forward on the missions the most according to the Blackmore Adventures. Veslo is the first instance of someone with mixed blood appearing in Mastara. Though she's an elf, she does have a human parent. She was the inspiration for me removing half-elves from 5th edition Mastara, instead going with the mixed race background, but I digress. If Blackmore needs something brought back, the Fetch sends his agents forward to scout and find out what is needed. Doesn't matter if it's a specific relic, adventurers needed to get around a foul prophecy, or just to launder some ancient artifacts in exchange for a vast amount of gold they can later melt down and repurpose. A common household item for ancient Blackmore is worth thousands of times its value in the modern day. So if the Kingdom of Blackmore needs a lot of gold quickly without anyone asking questions, they go back and sell some candlesticks for a, an exorbitant amount of money to some Derrican people and then bring back the gold. The agents don't come to modern day for side quests, exploration, or romance. They have a specific job and they are expected to get back as soon as possible. They can't stop the Great Reign of Fire. No knowledge of how it happened even survived. Modern day Mastara scholars have a general idea of when it happened, but all knowledge of the exact happenings of that day were vaporized. Plus, the Uther era agents would be hard pressed to believe the stories about Blackmore's Magitech future based on the Blackmore they currently live in. The agents can't go forward for secret knowledge, it's just too far in the future to have anything relevant for them to discover. Agents do their job and they get back. They can't risk discovery. If Glantry found a way to get Blackmore Magitech back, you are risking another Great Reign of Fire. Now, there is the possibility of Blackmore adventurers somehow making it through the comeback end to modern day. This is quite difficult because in Blackmore, the comeback end is a state secret, and the knowledge of it is kept secret by the Fetch and King Uther. The adventurers have to be quite powerful, or just really stealthy to get in, and exiting the inn in another time is problematic because you have to have somebody there to pull you out. Once they are in the known world, they could take up adventuring like any other character, but again, their Blackmore is not the Blackmore of the future. They would be exploring for the sake of curiosity rather than for more nefarious reasons. In addition, because they aren't supposed to be using the inn, getting back to their own time is going to be tricky. Now jump to the far future. The Kingdom of Blackmore is now the Empire of Blackmore that has used Magitech to conquer the world and destroyed all of its ancient enemies. They've merged the power of magic and the reliability of technology, and in a setting that has numerous methods of time travel, you can be sure they haven't tried to master it already. So of course they're going to be at least testing time travel technology, but that raises the question, so where are all the Blackmore time agents? There's a lot of reasons why Blackmore, at the height of its power, might not have used time agents. Time travel might be difficult to manufacture, or the risk could be considered too great. They might have used time travel with disastrous results, so they've just kind of put a moratorium on it. The possibility that the Empire is pursuing other options can't be ignored. Blackmore could be experimenting with planar travel, trying to get back to the homeworld of the Beagle through normal space travel, or looking at spell jamming to get past the crystal spheres that could get them to other worlds. If Blackmore felt that time travel was too dangerous, they would pour their efforts into other sciences. Imagine Blackmore scientists discovering the elemental planes, or a demon army could try to invade only to discover Blackmore has powered armored knights who then take the fight back to the abyss. 
But getting back to time travel, for Blackmore, there are several missions that would require them to come to the present day. First is the attempted recovery of any information on the Great Reign of Fire. They know what's going to happen, but they don't know what exactly is going to happen or when exactly it's going to happen. All the records were obliterated. Uther-era agents have no idea what the Great Reign of Fire even is. It happened a thousand years after their lifetime. Later agents could recognize the type of explosion, though they have no idea of the actual source. There's only a few things that could cause an explosion that large. The Radiance might be a source of revelation, but that also puts the Time Agents against the Brotherhood of the Radiance. And there's always the chance whatever they do to prevent it would actually be the cause, so remember, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly stuff. Outside of stopping the Great Reign of Fire, Blackmore agents would also be trying to stop time-traveling criminals, especially ones looking to sell the Blackmore tech to live like kings. They could be sent back to steal immortal level magical artifacts to use as power supplies for new magic tech devices being constructed. Or they could just try to flat out leech immortal level magics into new technologies, but that does cause the immortals to stop creating artifacts to stifle that practice. Then you have the agents devoted to fighting other time traveling races like the Ord. That would almost be a shadow war across the history of Mastara. Just be really careful with any timeline that involves a time travel war, because that's the kind of crap that got Star Trek Enterprise cancelled. The later era Blackmore agents will be kitted out with some very powerful Magitek devices, both to spy on their target as well as to keep the agents themselves from being detected. If you remember from watching the Magitek video, that Blackmore devices tend to be quite small, yet are able to recreate a large number of spell effects. A standard issue item would be a brooch that can create powerful illusions. Weapons are compact, but on par with the highest level magical weapons found. Force fields replace armor, where when everything is turned off, you can't tell a Blackmore agent apart from a commoner, which is the way they like it. Now, time agents from the distant past are one thing, but if you're going to fully enjoy Blackmore in the present day, you want villains. Not the normal villains like the Thonians, those are just another nation that managed to get some people to present day, but without any of the dangers the Blackmore Empire possesses. No, you want Magitek bad guys. Stuff like the Temple of the Frog or the Minions of the Egg of Coot. What's the Egg of Coot? Nobody knows. According to the history, the Egg of Coot was inspired by somebody that uh, Dave Arneson used to game with before he met Gary Gygax. And the guy turned out to be a complete jerk because he didn't want them to be playing the new fantasy game. And according to a lot of different stories, he played a, I guess they called it a practical joke, the sources didn't say exactly what the practical joke was, only that it cost Dave Arneson a lot of money to fix. So he turned the guy into a villain called the Egg of Coot in his game. How true is that? I don't know, but I've seen the story repeated from different sources. What actually happened, Dave Arneson took to his grave, so we just have the speculation. In-game, people have described it as an eldritch god, the dark master of technology that serves as a foil to the Empire of Blackmore. Other people believe it's a rogue technomancer, or even an otherworldly visitor that it set itself up on the planet to live like a god over all the primitives. What is clear is that it's very evil, and it has a lot of assets at its disposal. It has numerous agents, and it has countless plots within plots. Having one of those plots involve time travel isn't out of the realm of possibility. From the Temple of the Frog, you get, obviously enough, the Froggies, the mutineers from the Beagle. These guys are similar to Blackmore agents, only looking to improve their lot either in the past or creating a better future for themselves literally in the future. This could be anything from stealing secrets of the past to even using their advanced technology to set themselves up as gods in more primitive cultures. And remember, everything in the modern era is considered primitive to them. After the Great Reign of Fire, it took thousands of years just to get to the technology level of King Uther. Forget about late era Blackmore. Good places to run into the villains sneaking around in the future include Glantry City, as the Radiance is an obvious prime target. If you're going to go for higher level play, there's a good chance that a froggy would answer King Aerocall's summons and try to set himself up as nobility in Norwald. You can be sure that the agents of the Egg of Coot are heading straight to the Savage Coast to try to find ways to weaponize the Red Curse, either to control it or to make super soldiers, or just use it to mutate their enemies. Don't make them everyday villains, because if they try to violate the timeline too many times, the Immortals are going to extend the same prohibition to time travelers as it does to interplanar powers. Still, just like finding a Gith civil war breaking out with you in the middle as a good adventure seed, you can have fun with a Blackmore Ord battle starting in the middle of a festival or a court function, and you've got to figure out what happened after all the laser fire dies down. 
that's a huge bit of information on the Blackmore time travel in modern day. I hope you can get some use for it. It's a fun concept for adventures, but don't water it down by making it a constant problem, unless that's your whole campaign. You need to keep the mystery going, and being unable to trust people because they might be spies or criminals from the distant, yet much more advanced past, loses its charm if you use it too often. Normally, this is the part of the video where I tell you what the new option is for the poll. But as of next week, this channel has been live for three years straight. 156 videos with a large number of bonus videos thrown in. So I'm going to surprise you with something that I've been looking forward to. But until next week, I promise you, you're going to love it. Simply love it.